I um, started this project as a year of plastic. I had no idea that it would, um, you know, turn into my entire life as it were. Um, so it's not like I did a year and then stopped. I um, have, I have continued, which you'll hear about. But so anyway, um, Sarah Thornton, I'm on Cape Cod tonight, and um, which is where I live and work. So a couple of years ago, I used to walk my dog on the beaches. I have this little section of beach, it's about a mile long. And we used to walk from our house and then walk along the beach, you know, almost every day. And one year at um, Christmas time, I decided to do a reverse advent calendar. And that's where rather than, you know, opening the door and getting a little prize or a little piece of chocolate or a little whatever, um, you give back every day. So for 24 days, I was like, well, this will be good. I'll just pick up a couple of pieces of plastic every day. Um, or do a little beach cleanup every day. And if I don't get to do a beach cleanup, then I'll donate $5 to um, National Marine Life Center, which is a local organization that rescues sea turtles and seals and things like that. And at the end of those 24 days, I'd missed seven days of cleanup. So the National Marine Life Center got a whole whopping $35. Um, but I had so much debris that I picked up over that short period of time from such a tiny little area that I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I need to do something about this. And so what I decided to do was I decided to do a beach cleanup every day for a year and um, keep track of what I found. And for a while, I didn't actually tell my husband or my daughter, I didn't really tell anyone that I was doing it because A, a year is a really long time and I wasn't sure that I would succeed. And B, it's kind of nutty. And had I known that I would turn into the crazy plastic lady and and people would leave stuff that they find on the beach on my doorstep and things. I don't, I don't know if I would have done it. Um, but so, you know, the logical day for me to have started would have been January 1st, after, you know, the holiday season and whatever. And But I didn't. And it was um, sometime in the beginning of February. And I still was thinking, oh, my gosh, I need to do this. I need to do this. Um, that I found these two uh, little army guys one night, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. And the sunset was beautiful. And I thought to myself, I guess today is the day that um, I'm going to start my project. So I decided to pick up um, five pieces of plastic every day. That was my goal. I was like, I could do that. And so at the end of a year, that would have been around, I don't know, 1850, I forget, um, pieces of plastic. Um, by the end of nine days, I had already picked up that much plastic and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to up the ante. So every time I'd reach a, a goal or a, you know, I'd say, okay, well, I need to pick up a thousand pieces of plastic. Okay, well, I need to pick up 10,000 pieces of plastic. Um, and then as uh, Lorraine said, you know, at the end, it was almost 22,000 pieces of plastic. Now I've got to be up around the 30,000 mark, um, which is just crazy. And of course, um, the whole thing was I kind of was figuring it out as I went along. So I posted the, the the entire year on Instagram because I'm a photographer. Instagram is a visual platform. It seemed like it was a really good idea. And my thought in my head was, you know, I'd do some flat lays like these. I'd do some where, you know, maybe the same item, but I would just kind of, or I would, you know, post images and put little quippy cap captions or whatever. Um, but I really wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do at the end of it. I just kind of decided to see where it would go. Um, and after, um, I think this is after a week, I had enough of the different colored um, items to do these flat lays that are um, you know, have plenty of variety. And I was like, oh my gosh. And after um, after a couple of weeks, I had so much ghost gear. Um, ghost gear is fishing gear and nets and lines and ropes and things that's, that have either been discarded or washed into the ocean or thrown over the boat or whatever um, that are a huge problem in our oceans, as I'm sure you've all heard about. Um, 
but I was finding so much of it because of course the Cape has a huge shellfishing and um, commercial fishing industries. And so I started weaving bowls. That was the first thing that I did. And so every night I'd come home and I'd, you know, go do my beach cleanup. I'd, you know, count whatever I found. I always counted as I went along. I found that much easier. I would, then I would sit down and, and weave bowls. So I made for a while, I just made bowls constantly. I've, I've given them all away. Some of them I gave as gifts. Some of them I just donated to whatever. Um, but that was my first foray into, huh, need to make something with all this junk I'm picking up. Um, and this was pre-COVID. So I was still traveling at that time. And I'd actually traveled to Eastbourne in England to take a art workshop class with a um, fabulous artist named Alice Fox. And it was called Printing the Coast. And in the coast of England, they get a lot of um, like groins and things that have a lot of metal attached to it. So it was printing with um, rusty objects that were on the beach and printing with natural objects. So feathers and shells and seaweeds and rocks and whatever. Um, but because I was right in the middle of my project, I also started doing monoprinting with plastics, which is something that I still, um, I'm still continuing to do to this day. It's been, I, you'll hear me say a lot because I'm a very positive, uh, kind of uh, exuberant sometimes human being um, that I love this or I love that and and take it with a grain of salt. I don't love plastic in the ocean. I don't love picking up plastic from the ocean. I don't love finding army guys, although you'll hear me say different otherwise later, I mean. Um, but so I love monoprinting with plastic. I just, um, I find it fascinating, the the different textures and the way that the the sea erodes things. It's just, it's been something that I, I've been, I've been playing with ever since, you know, this was, I'd started the project in February. So this was April of that year. So I was only a few months in, um, but also because it wasn't, you know, where we had that period of time where no one was traveling anywhere. Um, we also go into New York city a lot or used to go into New York city a lot. Um, and so I go into the city and I think to myself, oh, I'm not I'm not picking up trash from the street because you're not always somewhere where you can wash your hands. And even pre-COVID, like I, my hands need to be washed. Um, so I would, I would set little boundaries for myself or a little, you know. And so like this was the Cherry Blossom Festival at the Brooklyn Botanical Garden. I was like, oh, I can, I can pick something up there because there's bathrooms nearby and it's not too bad. And I could create these, uh, these photos. So this was um, that day's Instagram post. Um, so I have no idea. I, oh, I probably, it probably said something like fork this or something. I don't know, but I tried to always um, make the Instagram posts, you know, mostly positive, humorous when I could, even though no one thinks I'm funnier than I do. Um, you know, I have, I follow a lot of people on Instagram and I never wanted to be you know, here's a big bag of garbage. Oh, here's all the pile of stuff I picked up today. Oh, here's the stuff, which there are a lot of people that do that. And I have absolutely no problem with that at all. You know, I, I enjoy following their accounts. I'm always amazed by the amount of stuff that people are picking up all over the world. Um, but it just was never my plan um, for my project. So, I mean, if you went back and looked at any of my original posts, all 365 of them, um, they're, you know, they, they do tend to try to stay sort of positive. Um, and also, again, like, I didn't want to just do the same thing. I didn't want to do like, here's a flat lay of trash. Here's a, you know, flat lay of trash. Oh, here's a picture of, um, so I would photograph through things or around things or under things, or I would stack stuff up or I would, whatever. I have done all sorts of stuff with, with plastic. Um, and one of the things that I learned through, um, spending a year, it's all over, but specifically my little beach and my little marsh, um, which is in West Dartmouth in Massachusetts on the Cape, um, is probably, I probably did 70%. Um, so whatever 70% of 365 is, but that's probably about the portion that I did in a little mile long stretch plus my little marsh, which is which is separate from that. Um, but so spending a year 
going to the same sorts of areas through every season in blizzards and thunderstorms and cloudy days and hot days and spring days and whatever um, was fascinating to me. You know, I've always been a naturalist. I've always been someone who loves being outside and who loves to explore our natural world. Um, pretty much why I do everything that I do is because I think nature is amazing and I love, I find it to be a tonic and it's much more of a tonic when you're not finding plastic and debris everywhere. Um, but so anyway, um, one of the things that I learned is we have about a bajillion spiders here on Cape Cod. And on like spring days, when the snow is melted and the ice is starting to thaw and we get those beautiful, on Cape Cod, they're never that warm, but they are sunny. Um, those first early like March days and the sun comes out and the, and the ice is starting to melt on the marsh. And all of a sudden there are so many spiders. I can't even tell you that come out of, I don't even know where they've been, but they're so fast because of course they're in tidal areas. So if they're hanging out on this marshy grass that's been underwater six hours ago, you know, they're super fast zipping in and out. There are millions of them. And through the course of my project, some days, and even still now after my project, um, you know, some days I'd pick up 400 pieces of plastic and some days I'd pick up 20 pieces of plastic. And at the time when I was doing it, my daughter was still at home. She was an athlete. I was, I'm self-employed. I own my own business. Um, I am, I serve on various boards and whatever. So like everybody else, what I'm saying is, you know, my life is kind of crazy. And um, I would always find time to go out, do a quick cleanup and bring it home. What I didn't always find time for was to go out, do a quick cleanup, wash everything I found, sort everything I found. So down in my basement, there are always bags of, of all this plastic crap, really. Um, and I very often, over the course of time, would find myself bringing home spiders, you know, and I wouldn't know until uh, you know, a week later or whatever, when I was out there sorting and then I'd pull something out and a spider would come out and I'd scream and I'd find something to catch it in because I am one of those kind of people. And I'd run upstairs and I'd set it free and whatever. Um, to the point that about, I think it was two weeks ago, I found this great piece of, um, it was, I think it was like a sandwich wrapper. Or maybe it was a fish wrapper or something. I don't know. It was like that waxy paper stuff and it had um, little sharks all over it. And I was like, oh, I'll make something out of this. This will be great. So I just crumpled it up and stuck it in my pocket. <laughs> when I uncrumpled it, it had a spider in it. So I'd been walking around for a couple of hours with a spider in my pocket. Anyway, this spider was one that, um, that didn't come home with me because I'm trying to do my fancy photo for Instagram, take a picture. I don't have my glasses on. I'm like, what, what, let me make sure that's sharp, you know, whatever. And then I'm like, what is that in my photo? And I realized I had almost taken home. You can see how easy it is to take home spiders. Um, so Wolverine was my first mosaic. And Wolverine came about because, again, going all the time, um, I went in um, March. We'd had a huge blizzard. I think it was still actually blizzarding. Um, so I didn't go to the ocean because I don't know if y'all have been to the ocean when it's blizzarding, but it's actually really painful. So even if you're, you know, all covered up the wind and the ice and the, it's not that much fun. So I went to this little marshy area and the whole entire, as far as I could see, was um, covered with snow. It just was all white. And I thought to myself, today is going to be the first day that I'm out doing a cleanup and I can't find anything because it's all snow everywhere I look. And then, I, you know, find this bottle, like a, you know, water bottle or something. I was like, oh, well, there you go. And then I found one other, I think like a bottle cap or something. And then I see this little blue thing sticking out of a tree at the edge of the marsh. And so I go over and I, I'm like, what is that little thing? And I give it a little pull and I give it a little pull and, and out came Wolverine. You can, depending on what you're looking at this on, you know, a little Wolverine figurine that I'm cracked me up, made me laugh out loud. I brought him home. I had to show my husband. I'm like, Look what I found. Who is this? You know, because I'm sorry, but my Wolverine was information was lacking. It's much better now. I have all kind of Wolverine knowledge since I found him. 
Um, but so I made them on a piece of um, wood from a um, something that I got from my mom's house. So it was a reused piece of wood. It was from an old piece of furniture. I mean, I cut it to be a comic book size and I actually searched around until I found a comic book that my little Wolverine figure would work with. Um, you know, it's made out of like those um, plastic bracelets that you get from like a lot of charities and things give it. There was one of those on there. There's straws, there's bottle caps, there's, um, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. But that was my first foray into um, into uh, mosaicing with the plastic. And uh, I still love Wolverine. He's, uh, he's fun. And he's, I love, um, like Lorraine said, um, the whole reason that I do this is just to bring awareness and to keep awareness on, um, the plastic pollution problem that we have. And, um, you know, having things like that makes a whole group of different people look at it and go, oh my gosh, you know, wow, look at what you did with, with marine debris that you found in the oceans. Um, so, you know, like I said, at the beginning in February of that year, I was like, I don't know. I was like, I'll worry about it next February when I'm all done. And in September of that year, a local gallery had just opened and they were having their second ever exhibit. It was here in Hyannis and um, it was called Our Changing World and it was about climate change. And um, of course, plastic contributes to climate change every single step of its existence, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and so I was like, yeah, count me in. And so I started taking some photos and we did some of these installations, which was really fun. I, I, I would love to do more um, installation art like this um, because when you have just a big, huge square of all black items, it was probably, I don't know, probably like four feet by four feet. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many people just stood there and were looking at it and like, oh, I see a, you know, wheel from a this and oh, a comb and is. It was just fascinating. Um, and I'd love to do more of that. Um, but that was, you know, it kind of got me going. And then that year's programs were all called The Tide Falls um, from a Longfellow poem, which is The Tide Rises and The Tide Falls. Um, I kind of felt like, you know, the tides keep doing this, but if we aren't better stewards, then, you know, we're just going to make a complete mess of everything, but the tides are going to keep still doing this. Um, but so each show that I've had, I, I incorporate new things or I learn new things. This one I did a lot of like weaving with ghost gear. I did a ton of monoprints. Um, I did some more mosaics. I learned how to use a bandsaw, which my husband used to think was his, but now it turns out it's my bandsaw. <laughs> um, my next show that season was um, at the Cultural Center here in Cape Cod. Um, and my favorite part about that one was that I got my name on the wall. <laughs> I thought that was the coolest thing ever. But here, you know, I've been I've been in business on the Cape for 20 something years. I've been a Girl Scout leader. I volunteered in like a bajillion things, but I get my name on the wall for plastic stuff I find on the ocean, which sort of makes me laugh. Um, and so then I just, I've had a bunch of shows since then that are all about, just making people think, making people talk, making people look and go, oh my gosh, you know, I try to, even with my shows, I try to keep quirky and interesting. And I always try to have um, both the stuff that I find as well as art that I've made or photographs that I've made and, and an educational piece. Like I try to talk about, you know, container spills or, you know, um, um, and um, you can't really see it, but right here in um, March of 2011, there was a um, water treatment sewer, water treatment plant in um, Hooksit, New Hampshire, and they had had um, torrential downpours, and and the Merrimack River had flooded, and then they had another storm, and it flooded even more. And this water treatment center, um, like all of these discs, 4 million, 4 million of these little discs, um, all overflowed out of the water treatment center and washed into the Merrimack River, which then washed out into the ocean, which then they have been floating around for the last decade. Um, and I'm still finding them fairly regularly um, on the Cape. So like I talk about stuff like that because people wouldn't necessarily know about these sorts of things. Um, I the last two summers I've had shows in uh, Preston Public Library in Connecticut. Um, they had me last year and they had me back again this year. Um, 
and again, I just, you know, I love to just make people think um, this year's shows were all called Hope is Not Passive. Uh, this was at the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy where it had a show the previous year too. Um, I love their shows because they're they're geared towards families. Um, so like I said, you know, uh, just talking. But I call them Hope is Not Passive because uh, we have to have hope for the future. We have to have hope for um, all of the endangered species and hope that climate change isn't going to sink Cape Cod and and hope that we as humans are all going to be healthy and happy. Um, but hope isn't passive. Hope's an action verb. So the only way for all of those things to happen is if we all kind of work together. Um, so that was my that was my concept for this year. I'm not sure what next year shows are going to be yet. I haven't decided. Um, but the I don't know if you can see there's the little um, uh, fireflies picture, which are made from those little twisty off caps from um, squeezy apple juice containers for kids. And then I had a, a canvas that I had, it was all warped and whatever. So I just painted over it. I poked holes in it and I actually sewed with ghost gear to make little trails of the, um, of the fireflies. So, cause I thought they looked like fireflies. So, and it, in the bottom you can't see, but there's like silhouettes of trees made out of, um, out of um, zip ties. But I said, you know, when I was doing this, I'm like, I want to be the crazy firefly lady. I want the kids to be on the beach and mom to give them the little twisty off stupid applesauce container with this dumb, stupid, twisty off thing that, you know, is not great for the planet. And to go, hey, mom, do you remember that crazy lady who made fireflies out of these, you know? And mom to go, mm -hmm, yep, oh dear, yep, I remember. I won't buy these again, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, this is just a little bit more of that. Um, I have a whole endangered species series that I'm just starting. This was um, uh, the, all the five sea turtles that we get on the Cape. I'm actually starting a whole new series of the five sea turtles we get on the Cape, along with other um, other endangered um, species. That's going to be part of next year's programming. I've applied for a bunch of grants, so fingers crossed that um, that I get some of them. This is all a labor of love, and I love doing it, but um, you know, my kids in college and, you know, I like to travel. <laughs> so anyway, that's, um, some of these, um, some of these things are in, um, like on my social media accounts and stuff too, because I'm sure if you're watching on your phone or whatever, you won't be able to see them, but you can always go and look after. Um, these are, um, this year is actually the year of the tiger. My daughter also goes to Clemson University, which so she is a tiger. So and I had found this piece of orange um, plastic on the side of the road. And um, actually it was on my way to work and I had driven by this piece of orange plastic on the side of the road and it was at a really bad intersection. And I had driven by it the next day and I had driven by it, I think the third day and I, it was either the third or the fourth day that I was like, oh, no one else is gonna get it. And so I went and, you know, cross traffic and did all the stuff to get this little piece of orange, which then I was like, hey, that would actually make a really good tiger. So took out my bandsaw and made a little tiger. He's all made with like zip ties and his whiskers are made from um, like a scrubby brush from a, from a um, boat brush. I find a lot of boat brushes, um, which yes, we do keep and I use for other things too. When, but the skeevy ones, I use bits that aren't. Um, little piping plover, um, it's piping plover size, really little. Um, just another show that I had, you know, that um, was part of this year's. And this um, is Hope, an Atlantic puffin. I named her Hope because I made her for that show that you just saw. And so I figured she could be my spokesperson for the year. Um, she's, you know, Atlantic puffin size because I have a thing about birds. You'll see one more, I think. Um, so just a few things that I like to find um, when I said, you know, that I like to find stuff. Um, that little astronaut, if you can see him, he's really fabulous. He's all kind of melty. His little face is all kind of smushed up. Um, it's from the 60s, which is, I just, I love the fact that I have this. I have other, I have like little police guy from the 
sixties and um, a little native American. And um, I have a bunch of stuff, um, little figurines from the sixties. The little fire truck is actually from the fifties. I found a bottle from the 1800s, um, which I love. And then I, I just, I find all sorts of stuff. Um, and when I was talking about the container spills in the eighties, there was a container spill of um, hair breaths, you know, little plastic hair breaths. And I found a few hair breaths, some of which could definitely be from the 80s. So whether or not they're from the container still, I like to think they are. Um, and one of the things about being on Instagram, I said that I meet all these great people all over the world who are out there, you know, just making such a huge difference. And, and some of them are making art and some of them are just cleaning up stuff and there's everything in between. Um, but I love the hashtags. So there's like beach breath, you know, if you go under hashtag beach bread, it'll be barrettes that people have found on the beach over the years. Um, these are um, some of my series of just, uh, you know, flat lay images or whatever. These were ones that I'd started. I, I should almost do this again. Um, I started them because the little um, um, shell, Nautilus shell, um, you can see right in the center there, I have it in all three colors. So that's kind of where it started. And since then, I have a couple more colors actually. So I really should keep going. Um, but I kind of like the fact that you had like a lot of the same things in different colors, you know, and they're found all over. So there's like straws in different colors and plastic silverware in different colors and kite things and, you know, kite string handles and, and um, sh plastic toy shovels and whatever. I just kind of find that sort of stuff fascinating. I always say it's sort of like a like a naturalist collection or whatever, you know, that it's, I love seeing the way the sea does, degrades different things. And I love finding the same thing in different colors on different beaches or seeing other people, you know, in different countries finding the same thing that I just found. And this is where I'm saying, like, do I love this? No, of course I don't love this. But if I'm going to be doing this, then it's nice to have things that make you go, oh, that's cool. Um, so why we should stop using plastic? You know, that little bottle cap says, wake up. You can't read it, I know. Um, but like I said, it's made from fossil fuels and it contributes to climate change every single step of its journey. It'll be right here forever, never going anywhere. It leaches toxins into our food and drinks and it um, causes cancer and hormone disruptions. It pollutes our waterways, our oceans, our streets, our communities, and it kills our marine life and, and seabirds. So, you know, all good reasons to perhaps skip it. Um, like 9% of all the plastic made gets recycled. So recycling is never the answer. We have to like cut back on our plastic use. Um, in the US alone, we use 1500 plastic water bo bottles every second. 1500 plastic water bottles every second, which is so crazy. And then if you go with even 9% of that getting recycled, um, you know, and don't get me wrong, huge proponent of recycling. I think recycling is so important. Um, recycle anything you can recycle, um, but there are better things, better things to do. Um, so there's this great video. Oops, I lost my thing. Sorry. I'm not sure what I just did. I'm not sure if you guys are still seeing my thing. I'm, I lost it somewhere, but sorry. I apologize. So let's see. from current slide, there we go. Better? Yeah. Am I better now? Yeah, we can see everything. Is it back to, it's not back to slideshow though, is it? Um, It is, but we can see all the slides on the side. Yeah, okay. So let me we see. Sorry, I've never done that before. I know I'm not. Um, there you go. Resume slideshow. There we go. Perfect. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So there's this, it's because I use my hands so much. I got to try to be calmer. Um, there's this great uh, little video and it's called Three Seconds and you can find it on Vimeo and I totally recommend it. Um, and basically the premise of it is um, that the earth is about 4.6 billion years old. And if you take that and put it into numbers that we can kind of more wrap our head around, then we could scale that to 46 years. 
so if you say that the earth has been here for 46 years, then humans have been here about four hours and the industrial revolution started one minute ago. And his, those are all his figures. And then his little video is about in that amount of time, we've destroyed more than 50% of the world's rainforests. Um, but then I take it even uh, farther with my project. And um, if we use those numbers and plastic was invented 30 seconds ago. And now, um, almost 13, or actually almost 14 million tons of plastic enters our oceans every single year. It's like a dump truck full every minute of every day. And if we don't make a change soon, by 2040, that number's gonna triple, which is an awful lot of plastic in our oceans. Um, so here's the sad part of my program. Um, these are all on, um, also art that I created um, without the, the informational bits, of course. Um, but like that's a, a little piping plover on a photo that I took of the ocean. Um, and the piping plover is actually made out of a piece of a piping plover, you know, don't cross this area. This is for piping, you know, whatever, piping plover sign um, that I found washed up. And so I made a piping plover out of it. Um, when I started this project, I did a course on marine debris and um, it was a worldwide course. It had been translated into, I don't know, like nine or something languages. Um, so obviously it had been a few years in the making. And so it's now about probably six or seven years old, the statistics and the data from the course that I took. When I took that course, it was 85% of all seabirds have plastic in their stomach. And it's, they are saying now it's not even gonna be within the next 10 years that every single seabird will have plastic in its stomach. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, 83% of humpback that humpback whales between Cape Cod and Nova Scotia have scars of wounds caused by ropes or nets. And of course, this is the main um, feeding area for humpback whales. So it's it's problematic that um, there's just so much trash for them to have to deal with. Um, in a recent study, 67% of all demersal sharks um, had plastic in their stomachs. And although there's not a lot of data on it yet, there are at least a thousand reports of shark entanglements over, over the years. And that's without a lot of data. And of course, 100% of all mermaids have found plastic tangled in their hair. Um, so plastic cutlery, this, these statistics again were pre-COVID. Um, Plastic cutlery is one of the top five, five things found during beach cleanups. Um, International Coastal Cleanup, which is an ocean conservancy thing, um, is the second or third, it must be the third Saturday in September every year. Um, so it just was a few weeks ago. And people all over the world all clean up on the same day and they enter data into the um, Clean Swell app, which is the Ocean Conservancy app to track um, litter. And so for the first time ever, the year before COVID, um, plastic utensils were um, in the top five of things found on the beach. And I can't even imagine what they are now with everyone leaving reusable stuff for a while and coming back to things like plastic um, utensils. So, um, they found, uh, it must have been 90, maybe 99 or two, I mean, not, yeah, yeah, no, 19, excuse me, 2019, gosh, I'm old, sorry, um, or 2020, I can't remember. But they found um, about 2 million plastic utensils in one day. So that's like every resident of the um, county of Loudoun using a fork, knife, spoon, and a soup spoon for one meal, and then just tossing it in the Potomac. And of course, we know if it got tossed in the Potomac, it would make its way out to the ocean, just like the, um, you know, the little hooks that discs did. Because even not being on the coast doesn't mean that all your stuff isn't still ending up in the ocean. Um, so, you know, what can we do?
reduce. That's my favorite of the R's. All of the R's are, you know, reduce is my favorite one. The most env environmentally friendly product you can buy is the one you didn't buy. You know, before you buy something, do I need this? My answer is usually no, but then also most of my clothes have holes in them. So <laughs> I don't know that I'm necessarily the person to answer to. Um, you know, reuse whatever you can. Um, reusable water bottles, bags, all those sorts of things that, you know, you'd think I wouldn't have to still keep saying this, you know, Earth Day started in the 70s. I was barely alive. And, you know, I've always used reusable bags. I've always used reusable water bottles. I mean, from the time I was little. And so, I mean, it's it's kind of ingrained into my whole world, but these should be the simple things, you know, these shouldn't be the things that should be, should be hard. It, it's, you know, it takes 250 milliliters of petroleum and three liters of water to make one liter of bottled water. So that's kind of crazy because we have great filters and, and things, you know, so that we can drink tap water whenever possible. Um, you know, if you can't reuse it, refuse it. Um, I don't know about you guys, but like, I don't, I, I tend to not have straws at all. My husband tends to like to use reusable straws and whatever, but I can't tell you how many times I go out to a restaurant and whatever, and I will ask for things like, so if I, I always get a glass of water because I drink a ton of water and I'll say, oh, can I have a glass of water? No straw, please, you know? Um, but I can't tell you how many times I go out to a restaurant and they, as soon as I sit down, they hand me a glass with a straw in it. Um, you know, those sorts of things, even though, Skipping the straw is never going to save the world. Um, skipping plastic utensils, never going to save the world. Skipping shopping bags, never going to save the world. But if we do, everybody does all of these little things, it's at least going to start. Um, but so if you can't reuse it, refuse it. Um, rethink, that kind of goes back to the reduce thing too. So rethink how you're using our natural resources. You know, packaging of the stuff that we buy accounts for 40% of our um, single-use plastic packaging. So just the stuff that goes around the stuff that you buy is 40% of our single-use plastic. It's the largest single-use plastic item. Um, look, next time you go out and buy something, you know, if you really need it, can you buy it without it being wrapped in plastic or in a plastic container or with extra plastic around it or whatever, you know? Um, buying reused, buying um, whatever, repurpose, um, that can be either fixing things or using something for something else or, um, you know, not throwing things away whenever you can. I mean, I repurpose all this stuff by making art. I try also to make useful things as often as I can because I know that, you know, I mean, A, we only have so much wall space, um, but B, I am a fan of useful things. So I got to be, you know, um, the fossil fuel industry right now plans to increase plastic production by 40% over the next decade. So that's kind of on us. I think if we keep buying all this stuff, they're going to keep making it. Um, and of course, like I said, recycle, you know, recycle is a last resort, not as a first resort. Um, so quickly, um, some of the things that I do is, um, like I use tea towels for everything. I don't use um, paper towels. And when I do use paper towels, they're recycled, but still they're wrapped in plastic. Um, you know, so I try to use tea towels. And so my, my story is this, you know, on that little line right there, the first one you can't see is Clemson which I've already told you is where my daughter goes to school. The second one has some ladybugs on it. That came from my grandmother's house and my grandmother died in 1992. Um, the next one is from my daughter and mine's first trip to Iceland um, where I would live if I had a bajillion dollars and my husband would come. Um, the next one is from uh, Darwin's house. My sister and I were there together. And the next one's from a little family vacation where we went to Burton on the water because they have a little mini village and I am completely obsessed with little mini villages. So if you all know of any, just you know, put it in the comments because I love a mini village. Um, the one next to it is from when my best friend and I went to Oxford and went to um, 
the Alice Museum, because I'm a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. So. And the one next to it is from Egypt. A friend of mine brought that back for me sometime in the late 80s, I think. Um, and so anyway, this isn't about like all of this cool stuff that I have. This is about every single time I use one of those tea towels, I'm like, ah. Oh, we went to Iceland. That was so much fun, or you know, the whatever, whatever it is. I have a story about every single tea towel I have, pretty much. Um, even some of the ones I got in thrift shops, I have stories stories about, you know. Um, and I have like levels. I have tiers. I have the ones that you can clean up the glass of red wine on the floor from um, in the bathroom if you need to. And then I have the ones that are like, don't you do anything but wipe your clean hands or very clean dishes or whatever, you know, and they all just get thrown in the wash and whatever. Um, kind of the same with napkins. I don't use paper napkins. Um, I won't go through all of the napkin stories, um, but it's kind of the same. I can do the same thing. The ones on top with the butterflies were, um, I got with my mom and we went to an estate sale in a really shishi part of um, Connecticut, and they were $12 for these really fancy, beautiful napkins. And my mom wanted to die that I was going to spend $12 on napkins. But you know what? I still think of my mom when I use them. Um, you know, she's not with me anymore. And, and I still love them as much as I did when I spent 12 bucks on them. I have napkins in there from my mom's house, from my grandmother's house, from my mother in law's house. Um, again, Nobody has a story about a paper napkin, I'm pretty sure. Um, so I make stuff out of everything. I made little scritchy sponges out of um, chum bags, which, you know, needless to say, my husband won't let me use on the dishes, but I used to use on my dog's bowl and I use them to clean like art supplies and whatever. You can use um, bags from potatoes or onions or whatever for the same thing to make produce bags or to make little scratchy sponges. Um, buy in bulk whenever you can um you know homemade food is always better and i understand that some of that comes with you know we can't always afford to make stuff from scratch um and we can't always afford to buy stuff in bulk or to buy you know in my case the organic tea and i do get that and so it's it's doing what you can you know um i never buy clothes or um anything like that. And if I do, I pretty much always buy them used. I never get my hair cut. I've never once had my nails done, you know, like I, whatever, I don't do a lot of those things. So I buy expensive tea that comes in a paper box with, or with, uh, in compostable, um, bags and little, you know, I love my tea and little, little notes every time. Um, but I do understand that, you know, we all can do what we can do. And there's there's no judgment about what you have done in the past and what you haven't done. It's just, you know, when you know better, you know better. And every step forward you can do is a step forward is the way I look at it. Um, you know, using um, bar soap, bar shampoo, bar conditioner, um, as opposed to, or again, all of those things in bulk and refilling things as opposed to buying you know, little liquid soaps and little tiny, you know, that are going to last you. I don't know how they lo long they last you because I, I haven't bought one. Or, um, you know, flossers. This is another one of those Instagram things. You know, they the hashtag is flossers in the wild. And if you're on Instagram, I fully recommend you go see flossers in the wild just to be how horrified at how flossers are found like everywhere. I don't know all these beautiful places, the Grand Canyon beaches everywhere around the world, spectacular locations. And I don't know what makes people go, hmm, I really need to floss my teeth here and mm, toss it. Oh yeah, this looks like a good spot. I don't know, but it's a thing. Um, you know, when you're traveling to just keep in mind all of these things as well, you know, um, buying local is also when you're traveling. So, you know, if you buy um, things that, artists have made or local foods or whatever, A, you're supporting the local economy better, um, but B, you're also protecting the planet a little bit. Um, and no, I did not find the little mini people. This was one of my series that I started that I didn't get very far with. Um, you know, I have catch of the day with the woman with her big fishing trophy with the little photographers and the Oompa band I actually found in my mom's house. We were cleaning it out and it, they cracked me up that of course my mother would have a little Oompa band of tiny miniature figurines 
because someday my daughter will be cleaning out my house and she'll go, yeah, of course, my mom had a little oompa band. She won't be surprised either. Um, you know, there was a, a study done in Norway and they said that, like, I don't know, it was some huge number that I don't know how valid it is now. Um, it's been a few years. Um, but like 80% of some forms of microplastics come from break dust and um, from the tread from our tires. So, you know, it comes back to use public transportation when you can, walk when you can, ride your bike. You know, I don't really have the option of public transportation on the Cape, um, but I do ride my bike to work probably five times a month in the summer. Is that going to change the world? Nope. But, um, you know, it's five times a month that I'm not going back and forth with my car and whatever. So um, it, again, it makes me feel better. Um, seven times is the average number of times that an American woman wears an article of clothing before she throws it out um, or um, donates it, which works out really well for me because I do pretty much, like I said, you know, consignment shop and thrift shop. So I get really fancy stuff because most women only wear them seven times. I wear them seven times a month. So it's all good when I do buy something. I know that uh, I know that I'm still going to have it 30 years from now. Um, you know, I don't use gift wrap. I don't use um, tape. Um, I do a lot of furoshiki. I get uh, material from um, for shops and stuff like that. I also use old T-shirts. Um, I've been known to wrap stuff up in like old concert T-shirts and stuff. My best friend lives in England, so I used my election ballot last year because I was like, well, that's kind of fun. Um, you know, magazines, string. If you ever give me a present, the wrapping paper will be reused. The ribbon will be reused. Um, if everybody in the um, United States reused just two feet of ribbon every year, the amount of material saved would tie a bow around the planet. Um, I've definitely done my part for that. I was very proud of my daughter. I sent her, it was just her birthday last week, and I wrapped her present in, um, I actually used wrapping paper, but it was wrapping paper that I previously got a present from. She's my kid, she knows she's fine with it. Um, and so she was going to her friend's house last night and she was like, oh, I'm bringing her birthday present. She's like, and I wrapped it in the little hedgehog wrapping paper that you sent me. So it just keeps going, it just keeps going on and on. Um, you know, I do all of my, this is my studio. I do all of my decorations with, you know, I try to make them uh, by, you know, those are old book pages that I used. Um, I make bunting for every season. Again, I either just scrap it or um, thrift shop it or whatever. Um, tags, I make um, gift tags out of the last year's cards. Um, I also make gift tags out of um, the tags that come off of clothing. Um, I paint them or whatever. Um, the two little Pringles cans, I found the Pringles cans lids on the beach and then I used old scraps of magazines to make silly little um, collages or whatever. Um, you know, more of my bandsaw expertise. <laughs> um, but my July 4th decoration that's all bottle tops that I found on the beach, um, the hearts made out of um, wood that I found on the beach from um, snow fence that had all washed up and a piece of rope again that had washed up or whatever. Um, I've gotten better at my rope bowls from the beginning, but I still, I like to play, you know? So I taught myself to do the fisherman's knots. And as soon as I find another really nice piece of blue like that, I'll do another one of those, but I'm not gonna do one of those with any crappy piece of rope because it's not worth it. It needs to be fairly long. Um, and when I do wanna make stuff, I tend to make it out of, things that I found or, you know, that's all material that I found on the beach or whatever. Um, so here's the takeaway. You know, it's going to take all of us. It's going to, um, where do you think here's my takeaways cards are? I have no idea. Um, it's going to take all of us. It's going to, you know, everybody needs to do as much as they can um, the most important thing we can always do is to um, is to vote. Um, you know, without policymakers making changes or requiring changes, it's going to be really hard for anything else to change. 
Um, so we really do need to start there. Um, talk about the issues. Um, if you can donate money, donate money to companies that are making a difference or organizations that are making a difference. Um, if you don't have money, donate time if you can. If you don't have time, you know, just simple things like sharing Ocean Conservancy's posts or, um, you know, here on the Cape, um, Center for Coastal Studies posts or things like that actually really does make a difference. Commenting on um, posts of people who are talking makes a difference because it makes more people see them and then people who might have time or might have money or might be able to help in other ways. Um, this is when I was talking about my birds, um, my little kingfisher who was made because I saw my first ever kingfisher in my neighborhood. And then the very next day I found this ratty piece of blue material like canvas and the edges were all like that. And I was like, yes, I need universe wants me to make a kingfisher. Um, you know, so please walk gently on the earth. The footprint we want to leave behind is not the footprint that we are leaving behind. You know, we want to be like the like the animals and and leave no trace. Um, you know, so I'm on Instagram and Facebook as a year of plastic. Um, I am actually changing that name relatively soon because it's stupid now that I'm not doing a year of plastic. Um, but I haven't done it yet, but it will, you'll see if you go to your plastic and it says, hey, my account has changed, um, please go check out my other account, but please do follow me. Um, my email is on there. Feel free if you have any questions, um, you know, you're more than welcome to reach out in any of those forms. I love to talk about things that people can do to help save the planet or to bring awareness. And I love to talk about, uh, the earth and how much I really do love it. Um, that turtle is part of that um, big board that I showed you with the five different sea, sea turtles. That's a loggerhead turtle. Um, but, you know, I mean, I do, I do love to talk about it. I have a little stop motion video. Um, I have a bunch that I, again, I told you I'm applying for grants for that. So, um, you know, who knows, who knows where this will take me, but, um, you know, please do reach out if you have any questions. 